Hi guys, welcome to the Sketchwork TV show, How Did They Do That? I'm your host, Justin Heesman. Sketchwork TV. Right, this week we're going to be taking a look at the amazing floor smashing effect that we used in the Hero Trial episode 3 last year. Uh, it's where we smash the concrete and it all cracks up. And uh, So let's take a look at that effect now and then we'll take you through the steps Superhuman to recreate strength. it. Superhuman strength. Yeah, and that. it's sort of something like this really. Uh -huh. Okay, Mr. Nolan, the academy starts in four weeks, so we will see you there. Proper job. Thank you. Welcome to the hit film uh, version of the Floor Smash tutorial. First thing you need to do, create a brand new comp um, composite shot, drop and call it cracks, drop on your footage. So there's my footage. You know, Dean, great position. Um, and then what you want to do is get your cracks image, um, which you can either pick up from uh, a site like CG Textures or you can create your own. Um, so drop that on, turn it into a 3D layer and then align it to your floor so that it matches the perspective. And then the end of the, the cracks, you want to just sort of level up to, to where the impact is going to be. And then what you want to do is just duplicate it a few times and just vary it slightly so it cracks off into different directions like so. So there we have our final um, position there. Don't worry about the colour or anything like that. Don't worry about the position um, in, com you know, in comparison with the uh, footage there because we're going to be dealing with all that in a different uh, composite shot. So there's our cracks. And first thing, uh, last thing you need to do is just switch off the uh, guide layer and that's the cracks section finished so then we move on to the shockwave so now we need to create a brand new uh, composite shot we'll call this one shockwave and drop on your footage and what i've done i've lowered the opacity of this footage to about 50 percent and you do that in your transform controls here and then add a new plane and make it a white plane make it a 3d layer and then play with the transform settings until you can get it lined up with your main footage. And what you can do, you can drop the opacity of that so you can just see underneath. And you can see I've just matched the perspective of uh, the actual footage there. So let's wrap that back up again. Next thing to do is and add a effect called radio waves. So drop that on. And then what you want to do here is change a few of these settings. The center point, you want to change it so that the center point matches where the impact is, which is just here. You want to change the shape to be a circle. The appearance, you want the color to be white. The opacity, you want to whack right up to one. Change the wave start to zero, fade in and fade out to zero percent. Wave end, I just left at the default, which was at 10 seconds. Uh, the start width and the end width, make them about 120. And then the last thing to do is the motion frequency. But what you need to do here is if you look at, not the frequency, uh, yeah, drop the frequency down to zero, but the expansion, go to the end of the animation. Do you see you've got the radio wave now and you've only got the one radio wave, which is what we want. Uh, go right to the end of the animation of, wh of where your the actor is just about you know the last frame and you can play with the expansion here to see exactly where you want this to finish so just move it to where you want there we go and that does for me you don't need to keyframe it because what that would do that will now just animate to that um, expansion and what you can then do you don't need the uh, guide layer on anymore so you can switch that one off. So you've now got a black and white with the white shock wave going across the exact plane. And you'll notice it does cut off at, at this blue line here. That's because that's where my, um, if I turn that radio waves off, that's where my white plane finished. And that's exactly where I don't want the radio wave to go over because I don't want it to go into this fence area. So that's why I've butted the uh, white, the edge of the white plane up to that there. So great, Let's reactivate the radio waves, turn off the guide layer, so we've got our black and white image, 
and that is it for the shockwave. Now if we move on to the impact next, we'll see how we can put it all together. Right then, on to the last section, which is the impact. So create yourself another new comp, comp shop, and uh, call it impact. Drop on your footage again, just like that. Next thing you want to do, you want to drop on your cracks uh, composite shot that we created earlier. So drop that one on. Let's go down to the beginning of this. So drop that one on there. Now, the first thing you want to do here with the cracks is to, you want to animate them. So draw yourself a nice mask. So you see, I've, I've already created a, an add mask there um, around where you want the cracks to start and then animate that all the way across. I put a position there because I wanted it and then I wanted it to speed up at the end and then woo, out it goes like that. So you can see using the mask, you're animating the creation of these cracks going across the surface of the floor. Uh, I increased the feather to about 50 and that was it for the cracks. Um, you can then, the final thing, just uh, right click and change the blend mode to difference and that will then make it blend and give it this, uh, for me, it gave it this nice brown kind of um, kind of tint to it, which was great, exactly what I wanted. I didn't have to do any more uh, color correction or anything, didn't have to add anything to that, so it was great. That's the cracks finished. So there we have it. The next thing we want to do is drop on our shockwave footage. So if just drop that one on there. And there's our shockwave which is from the other one. So we've dropped on our shockwave uh, composite shot. Create yourself a new, uh, a new grade, grade layer, and you want to add the displacement effect to the grade layer. Set the source layer to your shockwave. I uh, set the illuminance and the vertical and horizontal luminance uh, displacement to luminance, the maximum horizontal to 5 and the maximum vertical displacement to minus 40 which gives it a raised effect and I have to set the wrap pixels to reflect um, so and what you'll see now if I turn you, you turn off your shockwave you don't need that anymore it's just using it as a guide so you turn that off now and you've got a nice shockwave coming out which is great going all the way across and going exactly to where we want it to to end on which where we set it on the actual shockwave. Next thing we want to do is create a shadow. Now you can do this by dropping another version of the shockwave footage on and renaming it as shadow and drop on an invert effect. So first of all if we look at it I've also got the opacity up so it's the opacity back up so there we go there's the we've got called it shadow and all we've done is just dropped it back on there you want to drop on an invert effect which then inverts it to make it a black uh, shock wave and then I drop the opacity of that whole layer down to about 20% and it's given it just a little bit of a subtle shadow there nice soft shadow um, which is quite nice and then that goes across great so that's the shadow done now we want to add a, a shock wave, a bit of particles to it. Now this is where hit film comes into its own because it has a brilliant 3D um, particle engine built into it with some great presets with, that just need a little bit of tweaking and you can get some amazing effects there. So drop on a blue, so that's under presets. You want to drop on a blue plasma shock wave. Let's just enable that one. Now, what you want to do first of all is your transform settings. You want them to match the perspective because this is a 3D layer. So it automatically, as soon as you add it, you're going to get a camera uh, and it's automatically a 3D layer. So you need to position it and put the scale and orientation so it matches the perspective of your scene. So you can get those settings from the, the shockwave that we did on the previous one. So you can have a look and see what you, what you got for that because we've already done this once. So you can near enough copy these settings into your blue plasma shockwave. So once you've got that all lined up and uh, working where you want, you just need to then tweak the position so that the center position 
is where the impact is because you'll find it will probably be over here somewhere which you don't want so just move it so it matches where your impact point is now you've got a few a few bits and pieces to do there it can slow your computer down if you've got a fairly slow machine so you can use the preview if you like uh, mine's okay so that's pretty cool duration you want to keep to about 10 which is fine uh, type is plasma which is great width 45 height about 5 and the speed to work with what I've got I've, I've whapped it up to about 1200 um, which is quite fast which is brilliant for what I want to do and the size of 40 the band and the trail I've made the color to be to match the floor that way it kind of looks like debris um, and not some magical explosion which which is great um, and that's how we how I want it to be and finally I've, I've put the, tr the opacity of this layer down to 25 percent so what you can see it now it kind of looks a lot more better it looks like dust and stuff flying out which is great um, with little to no effort at all because it's already built into hit film it's just a preset you drop it on there and it's great um, to accomplish this in After Effects you can do it but you know it, it's considerably more long-winded and uh, because you've got to start from scratch with uh, with CC particle world or something like that so hit film great for this kind of thing okay the next thing you want to do because at the moment if you look everything is going over our main actor which is no good so drop on a copy of your main footage and you see it's disappeared uh, that is because I've put a mask on there and I've drawn a mask around the the actual subject lovely lovely Dean looking good uh, so and and I've, I've put a couple of keyframes in to animate the mask when he's moving and, and that is that is all that's needed for that layer and then all that does it just enables the shock wave and things to sort of go underneath him and and not uh, and not sort of cover him up. It doesn't matter about me because I'm going to be dusted anyway from, from the shockwave itself, which is great. Now, the final thing which I personally added, you don't have to, it's entirely up to you, um, but I added some lightning uh, to the scene as well. So if I switch this uh, grade layer, so drop a grade layer on, uh, drop on a lightning and electricity to it, you'll see I have animated... Uh, keyframed the opacity so it just comes on as he hits here and then fades away as time goes on and I've done a couple of things to the lightning just to make it to make it work so what I've done I've set the branches quantity to zero I've set the core to white the glow to a cyan color and I've changed the start point and the end points so if we go to where it's actually alive I set the start points and the end points to sort of his entire leg. So the start point is at the top, the end point is near his foot there. And then I've duplicated this effect three times to sort of move it in different places. And what you want to do to keep the lightning so it has its own um, look on each of them, just change the seed here on each of them. So this one's got seed of zero, this one I've got seed of five and this one I've got seed of 15 so it just gives it a little bit of a different animation on each of those so what you can see now is we start there and it builds up builds up builds up bam bit of lightning and then fades away as we go and uh, brilliant that's all we need to do for that and then for the final thing got I've, I've created another composite uh, composite shot called it main scene I've dropped on my impact footage and I've not done anything else with it. You can grade it in here if you like. But all I've done is added a grade layer. And in there, I've created an effect, a shake effect, to give it a little bit of camera movement. And I've animated the amount on the shake. So I've started at 25. And then about a second or so in, I fade it out to zero. So you can see it goes shake, 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 big plasma ball, bit of lightning nice motion blur and then it fades out and that is it Woo! so there you go one smashed floor beyond recognition but without anyone phoning the police to take you away and don't forget if you've got a question you want to ask us um, a tutorial request or even an episode you want us to put together let us know in the comment section down there or of course on our Facebook Google Plus 
or Twitter. Right, well, that's it for this week's How Did They Do That show on Sketchwork TV. Tune in next week to see how we created the Terminator vision effect. You know, the HUD from episode five, Terminated. And finally, the Sketchwork TV question of the week. What is your all-time favorite visual effect that you've seen in a movie? Maybe we will recreate it. Who knows? Until next time, I'm Justin Heesman, your host on Sketchwork TV. How did they do that? See you again. Sketchwork TV.